Twitter update to, let's see. Okay. I normally don't remember to do this until we've been on for like five minutes, so getting better. Alrighty. Okay. Okay. Shall we keep going? I don't know. Yeah, it's up to you if you want to wait a couple minutes as people show up. Um, like if, if people are able to make it, it's really up to you when you want to start like the introductory stuff. Yeah, I don't mind. We can. Why don't we? Let's do the introductions, and then people can people can trickle in because it is five past. Um, okay. So hi everyone. Um, we. Um, Anna. Hi Kelly. Um, glad you made it. Um, we, yes, uh, so I'm sorry, I'm lost this week, but hello. <laughs> um, I'm Hannah, um, Cara, do you want to introduce yourself as well? You sure, to... sure, just really quick. Um, hi everyone, I'm Cara from Wild Book Garden, which you probably know since all of these are going to be on my channel. Um, but yeah, really excited to be here for our third discussion. Um, I should have grabbed my book with me, but I did not prepare that. Um, so I'll grab that during a break. But um, yeah, really excited to discuss this one. I have not read this book for like at least five years, I think. It was one of the earlier ones I read from her. So I was really excited to like reread it and remember everything that happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I had also read this one before. Um, this was actually so after I read Fly By Night and hated it, I then, this was the next one that I picked up. I think by the time I got to this one, I would have been 12 to 13, so a bit older. I'm not sure how much that, how much of an impact that had um, on how much I enjoyed it, but I really enjoyed this one when I read it. And that was the thing that kickstarted me into reading the rest of the books that she had out at that time. Um, but I hadn't been back to it since, so it was nice to revisit it now. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would or than I remembered, which was nice. Um, I'll also do, before we get into the discussion, I will do the content warnings, which are flooding, loss of a child, emotional neglect, and anxiety and agoraphobia, I think are the only ones, probably the only ones that we're gonna touch on here. Um, and yeah, shall we get going, Cara? Do you wanna give, you said you'd enjoyed it. Do you wanna give general thoughts, um, star rating if you feel it's relevant? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, yeah, I remember really loving it the first time, and I gave it the same rating both times. I gave it five stars, um, which I think is interesting because there was a point during this reread where I was wondering if it was going to be a five star for me, just because there are some specific things that happen in this book that I find personally very frustrating and that can sometimes affect my feelings on a book overall. Like, basically, without going into too much detail um there there were some choices made in this book where i was not necessarily convinced that it was the only way to tell the story if that makes sense but then by the end i was like i see why francis harding did it and i could appreciate it and it made it um i guess like it made those parts less irritating <laughs> for me um but yeah, I, I loved the characters. I think this is her only like contemporary book if I'm remembering correctly. So it was really interesting to me to read a book where we have her classic like fantasy creepiness like in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just like love Ryan and Chell so much. Like <laughs> I love them, I would do anything for them. Um, and I was also like really impressed by how many, I don't know, how many like good guy characters we have in this book i feel like that's unusual so yeah i had a great time i think the atmosphere was great like i remember the scene with the mirror that was like the scene that i remembered very clearly from the first time i read it and it was still creepy this time around <laughs> so i thought the atmosphere was was on point so yeah that's my very rambly thoughts but i loved it again 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I am very curious about what the things are when we get into spoilers that you didn't like and then um, did. Um, but yeah, I also, I liked it a lot. Um, I thought it, it starts, it's quite a slow start. Um, I kind of, I gave it four and a half stars, although the more I think about it, the more I think it might be a full five. Um, and yeah, I, it gave me a lot of kind of into the woods vibes. Um, yeah. Not not just the wishes, the wishes are the obvious bit, but I think like the the general atmosphere of it also feels very into the woodsy to me. Mm. Um, but yes, um, there were some really scary moments. I also remembered the mirror. Um, and yeah, and I, I, because I started it quite early and I intended to read it in small chunks, you know, a few chapters and an evening. And then it was slow going at the beginning. And once I got about halfway through, I couldn't stop, finish the rest of it. Yeah. You know, so I think it's quite, it's compelling once it gets going. Um, and I also thought, yeah, I thought the writing maybe we can go into the writing, um, what you were saying about it being her only contemporary setting. I thought the writing felt very different to the ones we've read before and the, the ones I've read from her more recently. Um, mm -hmm. Even though it's still, I thought the writing was still beautiful and there's still lots of metaphors, but it feels less flowery. I don't know, would you mm -hmm. agree with that? Yeah, I definitely, I felt the same way is like there were still things that felt very distinctive to her writing style um like certain passages and descriptions and um just just like the way that she can have these really clever like funny lines and then these really beautifully like emotional ones like right in the same paragraph um so there was definitely it still definitely felt like her writing but I agree I definitely think it was less less like flowery and less descriptive um which I think made sense for the setting um, like, I think it was a good choice to pull back on that a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Also, I just want to pull up Julia's comment. I say yes. <laughs> well, you should, you should read all of them, Julia. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you would, I think you would love the way she writes kid characters in particular. Like she does a really good job. Um, and I thought, I thought partly, I guess, because of the writing and partly just the general vibes felt more middle grade than Fly By Night did, um, or I guess more what I would tend to think of as middle grade atmosphere. Yes, I was the same, Kelly. Yeah, I also had that, um, I was planning to read it, not not necessarily a little bit at a time, but I started it with like, I think about a week to go and I knew it was short and I'd read it before. So I was like, oh, I'll pick it up now and I'll just see like how it goes. And I think I read it in like two days because even though I knew the ending, I was still like, oh my gosh, like what's gonna happen? Like, I don't remember how this specific thing happens. Um, so I, yeah, I definitely got like very, compulsively readable near the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. But, and it, yeah, I, I guess neither of us reads very much horror, um, but it was, <laughs> it was much closer to a horror than I think, like all of her books have some creepy elements, but this was quite, this was as close to horror as I tend to get. Yeah, yeah, like that, the scene with the mirrors and even like some of the, the dream sequences and, yeah, like, I mean, I, I am an adult and I was still like, okay, this is, this is a lot. Like the fact that I, re like, I specifically remembered um, the scene with Ryan in the mirror for like five years. I'm like, this is, <laughs> I think that speaks to how effective it was. Um, she's very good at tapping into like very, um, I don't know, instinctive fears. Like, I feel like that fear of looking at your reflection and it doesn't look like your reflection is like a very... Um, I don't know. It's like a very human instinct, maybe. Yeah. Well, and I thought also later on the the scene where like the house is attacking him. Um, yes. Was, like it's not creepy horror, but it was scary. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So should we let's talk about Ryan um, while we're talking about the mirror? Um, thoughts on Ryan? 
I love him so much. <laughs> I just, I just want to protect him. Um, I feel like I, I don't, I don't know anything about like Frances Harding's like sibling situation, but I read this book and I'm like, was she the peacemaker sibling when she was younger? Because like I resonated with this so much. Um, and there's that, obviously Ryan is an only child, but um, there's that part where, I mean, like his, his parents are obviously, they, they fight in very specific ways that are very, um, I mean, it's it's scary for Ryan because he obviously like he doesn't know what's going on because they won't tell him. Um, and there's those parts where um, he's explaining to Chell that like she says something about how it's her fault. And he's like, it's not your fault. It's mine. Oh, like, it's not your fault, Ryan. <laughs> like, I just yeah, I, I felt I really felt for him. Um, and I just love how he he and Chell are both kind of like in a lot of stories, they'd be like the sidekick characters. Mm -hmm. um, and the book even kind of recognizes that. But instead it's like, we're following Ryan as the hero. And uh, I mean, Chell is definitely like an important main character as well. It's like, I feel like Josh is the character who would often be the main mm -hmm. character. Um, and I love that he's not. Um, yeah, I just, I really loved Ryan. I think that I, I really understand why he would be so caught up in Josh, even as he's starting to realize that there are warning signs. Um, I think that was just handled really well. And um, yeah, I don't really have a lot of co coherent thoughts about him. I just loved him <laughs> and I wanted to protect him from all the bad things. Yeah, no, I agree. I think on Goodreads, I put something about Ryan and Shell have my whole heart. And that's, that's about where yes. I thought it and like, <laughs> Ryan and Shell, I adore them both, and I just yes. Um, the scene where, um, the scene where Ryan shouts at his parents because yes. that, that made me cry. <laughs> um, but equally, I did like that his parents were so present, and that even though they were fighting with each other, they still cared about him. Um, yeah. Me. Yep. Yeah, and I feel like with with a lot of the adult characters in this book actually which this is something that we've talked about before we appreciate that Frances Harding gives the same level of like humanity and detail to like the kids and the adults that she writes um but something I really loved and noticed about this book is that it's not it's not like good parents and bad parents it's like they all kind of make mistakes and I feel like a lot of the choices like we find out at the beginning of the book that Ryan's mother, her job is basically like celebrity gossip books that make people hate her. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of times that would be like, oh, the bad mother would would do this kind of thing. But she loves Ryan so much. And even though she makes mistakes, like we see that like she's always on his side, like that scene where Ryan realizes that she called Josh, is it Josh's parents or Chell's parents? And like basically yelled at them about that creepy old lady. And it's like, he, what Ryan said, like nobody else believed him, but his mom was like, I am gonna go down on this hill because like Ryan said, like she had like no proof. She just believed him. And yeah, that scene where like she saves him from the house. It's just, yeah, I really like how how um, complex his his mm -hmm. parents were and just like the adults in general were. love everything about him and I, I like I really related to both Ryan and Shell like I've been the Ryan and the Shell in, in friendship groups like that um mm. and it did this the whole dynamic felt so real yeah <laughs> yep it's like okay friends is hurting like I wasn't ready for this <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes Julie. yes <laughs> we got her <laughs> Okay, yeah, shall we talk about Shell as well? Um, yeah, first off, how are we going to be saying her name? Because I was very confused. It's like an abbreviation for Michelle, but it's spelled like Chell. So yeah, how, how do you I want to say it, her I name? I assumed it was, Mich uh, was Shell, but we can do either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. We can do both. Yes, so thoughts. I... <laughs> very similar to Ryan is like, I just loved her. Um, oh my gosh, that part where 
Josh is like comparing her to coleslaw <laughs> and he's like you never order coleslaw you just eat it because it's there with what you actually want and I'm like you are a monster <laughs> like um and then yeah, I like even, how even Ryan has to listen to yes. that line about how like the, the good thing about Shell is that you never have to listen to what she's saying and I just yes. my heart broke for I know. I know and like she knows it too because like near the end she she's talking to Ryan and she says something like, well, I did say it, but people don't really listen when I speak. And I'm like, yeah, it was, it was really hard. And I, I like that Ryan has to recognize that he's been doing that too. Um, yeah, I really, really appreciated that. Okay. So like seashell, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really liked shell and similarly to Ryan, I feel like, it was very clear why she would have gotten, like why she would be in this friend group that clearly makes her unhappy, <laughs> um, but still, it's still better than the alternative. Um, and yeah, that, that scene where she's talking about how they all got their powers and she's like, I always, I've always felt like a shell person and like, I don't really have anything and maybe that's why I got this power. And it's like, no, <laughs> that's not true. Um, yeah, so very similarly to Ryan, it's like, I just wanted to give her a hug. And I was, this is one of those books where like, it sounds funny to say this about fictional characters, but I'm really proud of Ryan and Shell. <laughs> like, I'm really proud of them um, at the end of the book. Yeah, and I, I just, I love the way that she becomes so much more confident towards the mm -hmm. end um, and, you know, starts taking charge of things yeah. herself. Yep. Maybe we're going very satisfying ox, I think. And then the obvious third point is Josh. Um, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I have some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's such such a frustrating character because he's kind of awful. <laughs> Like he's he's a brat. He's, for like, awful. he's really he's he's very awful. Yeah, um, like ninety percent of the things he does are, are bad. Um, but every once in a while, you get this moment that, like, I, I messaged you about this one, like the part where um, he, like, Brian's thinking about like, oh yeah, I forgot Josh really hates my mom for some reason, and he's like, he has that memory and he's thinking about it, and it's like very obvious that. Josh does not hate his mom. Josh is watching like an actual loving mother <laughs> with her child and it's like killing him because his parents obviously don't care about him at all. Um, so I like that we had a couple of things like that that kind of kept him from becoming, like Josh is still the worst and I'm not sure I would have thought the way that um, Shell and Ryan did that like he could still mm -hmm. be saved. I'm not sure I would have believed that if I were in their place based on the things that he did. Um, but I like that we got a few moments with him that humanized him a lot more and that made me like, because like, I, I did care what happened to him. Like, even though he was doing these horrible things, it was like, he's a kid, you know, and I, I didn't want him to get like destroyed by a spirit of the well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, a lot of the reviews were like, um, Josh, Josh seems awful, but then you, you realize that he's being controlled by the spirit of the well. And I would disagree with that. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, he yes, was. I was going to ask about that, Kelly. What did you think of the fact that he was adopted? Because it doesn't really do anything for the story. Um, seems an odd choice, I thought. I thought. Yeah. Like I don't, yeah, and also the whole thing with Josh's aunts, the whole thing was sort of weird to me. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting too that they like made the point that he was adopted because I almost, I wonder if it was like, like he makes he makes that comment where he pretends he doesn't care, but obviously he does that like, oh, he thinks his parents would return him if they could find the receipt. And I think, I wonder if maybe showing that was supposed to show us like, they made the conscious decision to like take Josh home with them and adopt him and make him part of their family. And they like still don't want him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then we talked a little bit about the the general friendship dynamic, but do we want to? We'll I think we'll get into theme like themes later, but I think it makes sense to talk about friendship generally here. Yeah, um, kind of what we were saying earlier is like this is a very messy friend group, um, but it felt very real. Like kind of you know like we were saying, it's like I think a lot of people have been in some kind of friendship situation mm -hmm. like this. And like where it's like a survival thing. Um, and I just, yeah, it really, I think it was very effective and it felt very realistic. And um, yeah, it's like, even though kids are young, like they, they still have very complicated relationships with each other, um, mm -hmm. which I appreciate that we saw here. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why I um, mentioned it, Kelly, because I don't know, it just seemed interesting that she made that point. Um, because it, it, I like it was repeated quite a lot. The fact that he was adopted was sort of rammed home quite extensively. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of in her other books if we see anything like that. Cause I feel like she tends to do found family really well, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, similar. So I'm, yeah, I'd be interested to know why she made that choice here. Like if there was a specific reason. Um, the only thing I can think of is kind of what I said before, where like, I wonder if it was supposed to, like it was supposed to like create sympathy for Josh in the sense that like, mm -hmm. not, not that like parents who have who like, you know, give birth to children, not that they don't want their kids, but do you know what I mean? Because like they specifically chose him through adoption and they didn't seem to appreciate it, you know? Um, other than that, I don't really know what, what the intention was there. Yeah, and, and as Kelly says, like we don't get much of his parents um, compared mm -hmm. to Ryan's parents, for instance. Yeah. And do you want to talk about the other characters? Um, I have some of the secondary characters written down, but any of them that you feel particularly strongly about? Um... Yeah, I I kind of liked Donna. <laughs> um, I mean, she sounds awful, like when she was at their school and everything. And like, yeah, I, I can see why they would all hate her. But I kept like, as I was reading, I was like, I remember kind of liking Donna and I don't remember why, <laughs> like what happens. And then there's that part at the end where she just is like magnificent. Like she just like rises to the occasion and saves everyone from the flood. And like, she she like self-actualizes, like she realizes that she's way better <laughs> than Mr. Punzel. And so yeah, Donna surprised me. Cause like I had that inkling that I, like, like she was one of the ones I remember kind of liking and I'm like, why she's the worst. And then we get her at the end. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so she was fun. Um, yeah, still, still like probably should not be working with children, <laughs> but. Yeah. And I liked yeah. Will also. Yes, I liked Will. Um, he was so sweet. Just, yeah. I liked, um, I liked Will and Carrie's friendship as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually like really, this was kind of what I was saying when I was like surprised by how many like good guys there were is I really liked how many of the like random people that they meet turn out to be like really good and like help them, you know, rather than, um, I mean, there's like Mr. Punzel, but other than that, most of the adults they come in contact with are like pretty good. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And we, get, yeah, we also find out a lot more about them, which is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and both Will and Carrie, when they tell them what's going on, they're like, this is weird, but okay. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yes, that's a good point, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, I also, I liked that they, that they believed them. Like, they're like, this is bizarre, but given what's happening right now, I guess I'll go along with it. <laughs> yeah. I think like Will asked Ryan to like show him his creepy like eyes on his hands. And he's like, okay, we can, we can move on. <laughs> like, I believe you. Please stop it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I do think I think Will is yeah he's more complex than he gives himself credit for as well. Um, yeah, the fact that he comes back to get them and gets them out of the house and you know gets them floating down on the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's is it. I think Ryan at one point he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I ever thought of him as floppy," because <laughs> they're none of them are very impressed when they meet him. Mm -hmm. But he has hidden depths. And then thoughts on Carrie? Um, I don't have massive amount of thoughts on Carrie, but I don't know. I thought she was interesting. Yeah, I I liked her. I remembered her being a much bigger part of the book for some reason, um, which she's not really. Like they meet her a couple of times, and then obviously like rescuing everyone from her house is like a big part of the climax. Um, but for some reason, I remembered her being like a very significant character, and she wasn't really. But I did like her. I think like thematically she's interesting because she grants her own wish sort of mm -hmm. yeah um, long before the Wells Angels as they call themselves yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah should, should, uh, should we should we talk about the wishes um um I thought the idea of a conquer wish was so kind of insightful um yeah Yeah, I did as well. Um, that was like, I didn't remember all the details about the wish granting. Like that was one of the things I didn't remember super clearly. Um, so when Ryan figures that out, I was like, oh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Also terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, like when they realized that Will's like inner wish was that he didn't want to be himself anymore. And the way the Will interpreted that was like, let's kill you. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I thought the everything about the well was super interesting. One scene I did remember, which like I'm realizing that this is something I tend to like in books, in like creepy books, where like they are reading about like the history of what's going on and they find out all this creepy stuff. Like that scene in the library where Ryan is like putting everything together. I remembered that <laughs> from the first time. So I really liked that. Like when they find out, um, like the way they explain how like the well witch came to be what she was and like why mm -hmm. she's like struggling like why the wishes are like rotting and i thought that was all super interesting mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a big sort of francis harding recurring element the, the yeah. idea of people forgetting the old ways and the consequences of that yes yeah. And also, this is a totally irrelevant side note, but the librarian has such a good memory. The way she, when she remembers that the book is about four inches thick, I'm like, librarians like, are superheroes. Like, that's not, that's not even a question, but like, she's such a specific yeah. memory. I noticed that part too. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, give this woman a raise. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I thought that was like incredibly impressive as well. Um, but like at the same time, I didn't question it. I'm like, yeah, librarian, like, they would <laughs> yeah and like those little details about like this is one of the things i love about her books is like she'll mention little quirky things that are really interesting and then they'll actually be a part of the plot like the fact that ryan's mother like doesn't like dust jackets getting torn so she takes them all off but when visitors come by she wants their books to look classy so she slaps them all <laughs> onto books that approximately fit them so no book is like ever where you expect it to be and then that becomes like an important part of the story later on um I just loved that I mean it was very frustrating like waiting for them to find this book that was going to tell them everything but at the same time it was like classic Ryan's mom <laughs> like yes. but I also loved um the line from his dad when he's like yes he's having his teenage rebellion he's putting all the covers out <laughs> yeah yeah I loved that it was like after Ryan told them off, which was incredibly satisfying. And he's on the phone with his mom. Yeah. He's like, yes, he's having a tantrum right now. He's organizing all our books. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably what I would do if I were having a tantrum. Like, I. <laughs> yes. You channel it into book organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, general other themes, thoughts, I thought, like power and loneliness, I thought were maybe the big ones. Um, yeah. Relates to Josh in particular. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I also, going back to something you mentioned before, I also don't think Josh was being controlled by the well spirit. Like, I think Ryan even says something like the, the spirit kind of sparked something that was already there. But I, yeah, I don't think, um, I, don't, I don't absolve him of all his <laughs> actions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, and I think like you said, is like we kind of see the the effects on power or of power on different people. Um, I also thought it was really, it was sad, but I think it was very realistic that like after all this happens, it's not like, oh, and they're besties again. Um, like Josh goes away to a different school and like none of them really talk about it right away. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think you have, you have some hope that things might get repaired to some extent, but I don't, it's not like it, they can all just move past it. Like it never happened, which I think is healthy. <laughs> it's like, you can't just pretend this didn't happen. Um, yeah. I had forgotten about Miss Gossamer, mm. like her character completely. Yeah. Yes, and I, I thought, and then skip past her. Do you want? Do you want to talk about? I think that's going to be quite spoilery. Um, do you want to? Yeah. Do that? If if you want to disappear. So Julia, if you're watching and planning to read this one, then maybe I don't know. Maybe put it on mute or <laughs> come back later. I don't know. I never know how much other people care about spoilers because I care, but I don't know if everyone else does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thoughts on Miss Gossamer? <laughs> yes, Julia <Really> Sneaky. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought something that was really interesting about her is that instead of like, oh, we find out her tragic backstory and now we realize she's misunderstood, it's like, oh, she's still bad. Like, we understand why she's doing this, but like, she's not. It's it's not that she's misunderstood. It's like we we know why she's doing what she's doing, but like we're still not expected to be okay with it, um, which I liked. So yeah, that's kind of like my general thought. Like she was she was very creepy, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then when we find out, like what happened to her, it's like I I just think Frances Harding did a good job of showing like this is a tragic thing for someone to go through, but also it doesn't mean that you get to hurt people whenever you want to because of what happened to you. Like the things she says to Chell, oh my gosh. No, I think I, I felt about Miss Gossamer similarly to how I felt about Josh in that I really felt for her um, and she didn't deserve, you know, the things that happened to her, but she was still <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you've seen that Brooklyn Nine-Nine meme that's like, cool motive, still murder. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That's how I that's how I kind of felt about her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, she because she but also I think that bit sort of talking about um the general middle gradeness of it, I thought that kind of her plot line was more predictable than Frances Harding plots tend to be, um, which yeah. I think contributed to like I had read it before, but I didn't really remember the plot. Um because it was a while ago. And I think like, as well as what we were saying about the writing, I think the fact that it was much more predictable, I think, contributed to the, the fact that it reads younger, maybe. It, it feels more straightforward than I think the plots of her books often do, because it's pretty much, like, we kind of know from early on, like, what the main story is, you know, yeah. it's about granting the wishes, and then they realize that this is bad so they're trying to figure out that and then josh loses it and so they're trying to fix that so yeah there's there's not as many um i guess there's not as many twists as her books usually have yeah. um which i still enjoyed this one like i i've said before that a book does not necessarily have to surprise me mm -hmm. um for me to really love it um but yeah i definitely think that there were still surprises about this book but they were like smaller ones i think mm -hmm. yeah and like thoughts on this as her second published book? Because um, Complex, Complex, she had Fly By Night and then she had this and they, they could not be more different. Yeah. Should we tell Julia it's okay to come yes. back? Okay, <laughs> let me, Julia, you may return. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because they really are kind of polar opposites. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder if, 
I, I don't know if it was like her editor or the general response to the book was like, this is good, but what's going on? So she like really, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, like kind of pulled back on, like we talked about the writing as well. Um, so so like yeah, as, I, yeah, sorry, as, as far as I know, from based on the ones that I've read, all of the following books are much more like fly by night than they are like this. So yeah, I don't know, she, I'm like looking at my bookshelf right now. I think, yeah, they're much more like twisty. Um, yeah, and I wonder too if, like we were saying with the writing, if that decision was more about the setting, like the contemporary setting, and maybe she felt like it would have felt out of place to have all of these really dramatic shifts. Since like she really is telling a story about like ordinary people in an ordinary town. Um, like I really love all those details, like when like the parents, they're talking about like the parents um, and like Magwai and how it's like, nobody really knows why, but everyone knows that you shouldn't go there. And then there's that other, that other village that they're talking about where it's like, oh, if they stay out late here, you'll come back smarter than when you left. <laughs> and just like little stuff like that, where it's like, yeah, it's, it's very like real, real world. Like we all know places like that. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, well, and there's there's all there's a bit, the moment where Donna calls them the Twilight Zone twins, um, and it's like your target audience does not know what the <laughs> Twilight Zone is. That's a good point. <laughs> I just barely know what it is. I definitely didn't when I read it for this for the first time. Um, yeah, I think I was maybe a little above, but not much older than the target audience when I read it. Um, I just think. But it's interesting when authors make references like that. That is funny because, like, I know I know the reference, but I've never like seen any of the show. No. <laughs> um, that might also be like personal taste, though, because I'm pretty sure it would freak me out too much. <laughs> Some of it, at least. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, and yeah, you're right, Kelly. Um, it does, and the whole. I guess the whole, the focus of it or the, the atmosphere of it changes as well over the. Yeah. And what did you think of the fact that Ryan has been having the glass house dream since before the book starts? I wondered about that. I was, I couldn't figure out if that was like, like it was a, a regular dream. And then because of what happened, it became like, a magical kind of reality or if Ryan was somehow tuned into the well spirit already um I just thought of that now as a possibility so yeah I also I was not quite sure how to interpret that I thought that was really interesting yeah I also have no particular thoughts and don't really know what to make of it but just thought it was interesting yeah um that and also the the shopping trolley motif um yes <laughs> Because it came, that came up a, a lot. Well, yeah, I know it was meant to be symbolizing. I know. Well, and also the fact that um, I feel like something she often she often does with like the creepy stuff in her books is she'll tap into like very like specific, or not even specific, but like human fears that I think a lot of people have like the reflection thing we talked about there's always something a little weird about reflections but then she'll also make things creepy that have no business being creepy <laughs> and like the part where like where, where they were like following them I was like why is this creeping me out so much um yeah I also I have the UK edition so thankfully none of the words were changed because I actually got this when I was when I was abroad, I bought like a bunch of her books and just read them um, very closely together. And I just want to note if there are any publishing people watching that we are in fact smart enough to know what a shopping trolley is. Thank you very much like, for future reference. Um, I do think this is like a very minor thing, but I do think it was really funny. Like their original plan was to get the deposit back. And I'm like, that would not work in the US because we don't do that. <laughs> we don't have any of those like, um, it's not like coin operated or anything. It's a smart idea. It's if we just don't do it. Yeah. And okay. So while we're on that, actually, um, thoughts on the title? Because I've read a lot of reviews saying this was a very different book than I thought it was going to be based on the American title. Yeah. I, I hate the American titles. I'll be very excited when we get to the books that don't have those anymore. <laughs> um, because like, I think, well, what is it? Well-witched or well-wished? Witched, I think. 
Okay. I think it's a good title, although it is confusing because a long, long time ago, I read a different book that was called Well Wished, which was also like incredibly creepy. That one was as well. Um, but it, apart from being very similar to another title, I do think that it is a good title, but yeah, it definitely doesn't give you a feeling for what the book is going to be like. Mm -hmm. Um, which is extra frustrating because one of the things we've said before is like it's very hard to get it's very hard to like categorize her books and like get them into the hands of people who will really like them and it's like you guys just make it worse with these titles that make no sense like Goldstruck Island is one of my favorites and the American title is The Lost mm -hmm. Conspiracy which makes like yeah plot wise it makes sense but it's a dumb title <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the American covers that go with those titles are very cutesy as well. Yes. Um, you know, that doesn't matter <laughs> at all. Julia has corrected me. We don't have all these where I am, so I did not know this. And yes, exactly, for a degree. Yeah. yeah, although having said that, none of the covers for this book are my favorite. <laughs> I should grab mine while I have a second. One second here. I don't know which cover you have. I actually, I like mine. Um, and I also like that you can kind of see the kids. Like you can see that Ryan wears glasses. You can kind of see Chell. Um, like it gives you just enough of like an idea of what they look like without being like the annoying people on the covers thing. So I do like mine, but it's not like my favorite of her covers. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh yes, we didn't talk about um, like Ryan's way of seeing things upside down. I thought that was an interesting description. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that one too. I think the redesigned covers for the US are a lot better. Um, I also find it odd how some of her books have like nine covers and some of them have like three. <laughs> like how did they, like A Face Like Glass has a bunch. Um, I feel like I'm still discovering covers for A Face Like, uh, for a Fly By Night and Twilight Robbery as well that I've just never seen before. Yeah, I like it too, Julia, yeah. And I like how the spines look. Like I have a few in this edition that are lined up next to each other. They look very cool. Um, yes. Um, I did say, I don't think I said, I think I said was talking, when I was talking to Cara before we went live, but I did say that this would be a short one. Um, I don't know that I have like, particularly any other specific things. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say, Cara, before we go into quotes? Um, I'm trying to remember if I had anything. I don't think so. Let me see if any of my quotes jog my memory. Um, I think we covered a lot of it already. Oh, Crooks Baddock. That was the name of the village. That, like, it's like, oh, yeah, you can stay out till 11 o'clock. <laughs> it's so wholesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I'm not thinking of anything else that I wanted to mention. Okay. Should we do quotes? I have fewer quotes yeah. this time. Um, yeah. But why, why don't you start? Sure. I also have fewer this time, but um, I, I liked a lot of the, the funny ones, like the very dry humor. Um, Ryan's mother liked specialists. Now she had money. She often showed love by buying Ryan specialists. He sometimes wondered if he would come down on Christmas Day to find one struggling out of wrapping paper with a ribbon festooning his head. <laughs> I, I love the like aggressive affection <laughs> of his mother. Yeah, I also liked um, the the bit where she um, puts coffee in the bath. I just thought that was so <laughs> like is that Francis Harding way of making you know, understand everything about a character in one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I feel like the ones I noted were the sad ones, the long sad paragraphs. So I don't know <laughs> want to read out. Um, okay, I'll let's see. I only have a few, so we can just like take turns if you want, or like like I do all mine and then you can yeah, do all yours. Um <laughs> yeah, I marked a lot of funny ones this time around, interestingly. Um 
It's when they're playing Jenga with their chips and Ryan, it describes Ryan as he usually won through a maddening patience that the others yearned to disqualify. <laughs> I find that hysterical and it's one of those things too it's like I know exactly like we understand Ryan better and we understand his friends better um oh I marked I marked actually one of the ones about Crook's Baddock it was the very opposite of Mag White parents thought that if you went to Crook's Baddock and breathed in you would come back better educated uh let's see okay I also marked a couple sad ones it looks like um People's personalities took up space, he sometimes thought. When they were trapped in a house or a job or a school together, they rubbed up against each other, squeaked like balloons, and made sparks. Ryan's parents both had large, gleaming, hot air balloon personalities. Sometimes it was hard to fit them into the same house, and Ryan had learned the art of suddenly making himself take up less space, demand less, so that his parents were not chafing against each other as much. Made me want to cry. <laughs> like, uh, like, he should not... Kids should not have to do that to understand that like I hate it um and I think oh and this was just like one line that I thought was really this is kind of what we were talking about she still had some of those sentences that were like very quintessential Francis Harding where they were um much more descriptive it was almost a smell that was almost a darkness that was almost an echo that was almost a bitter taste in the air I just really like that combination of words and those are my quotes <laughs> Yeah, I've just got things like um, the only other um, Ryan looked up at Shell and was suddenly startled by how happy she seemed. The only other time he'd seen her look quite so happy was during a cricket match in the school field the year before. As usual, she'd been exiled to fielding out by the fence, but somehow a ball had curved her way. She'd put up a hand to shield eyes from the sun and straightened to look at the ball cupped in her hand with a disbelieving smile. I helped, said her smile. I was useful. I know. <laughs> <sighs> These kids both need a lot of hugs and probably some therapy. <laughs> like, I love them. <sighs> yeah. And then, yeah, even with all the bad stuff, this is Ryan about Josh. He was still my friend. And if your friend's drowning, even if he's trying to drown and struggling to shake your hand off his sleeve, you don't let go. He was in a bad place. We had to go back. We had to go there to get him back. Like, yeah. Which is so generous of Ryan as well. Because after everything that Josh has done, Yep. Yeah, and I think that that line really, it does a really good job of making like the reader understand why Ryan's mm -hmm. like, it was almost like seeing that Ryan and Shell still saw something worth saving in Josh was what made me like, okay, I'll buy it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I really liked that part too. And that like that example he uses like it is true it's like yeah you if somebody's your friend you're not gonna let them hurt themselves even if it's what they want you mm -hmm. know yeah mm -hmm. i don't think i have anything oh milk was extremely useful it seemed ryan wondered what else it could cure besides radioactivity and psychic strain yeah yeah, that was one of those things you think is like a one-off thing, and then like multiple people. <laughs> it's like, just drink some milk; it'll it'll be good for you. Yeah, I also I'm not gonna read this one since we're in the non-spoilery section again, but I think the ending couple of lines were really good. Like that last paragraph, I really loved. Um, yeah. I think that that is everything I had. Um, if there's nothing else, um, do you want to just introduce next month's book? Yes. Um, I have a copy of it. Perfect. Does yours, I don't know if yours is the English title or the American title. No, thankfully all of mine have the UK titles because I have taste. Except for the robbery. <laughs> For except for Twilight Watt Robbery, yeah, except for those two, which they only have an alternate title for one of the books. Make it make sense. <laughs> I don't understand. Um, yes, so if I'm remembering correctly, our next one should be Gulfstruck Island, um, which this one is longer, definitely. It's like about 500 pages, but this is one of my favorites of hers. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited. And um, I've actually reread this one a couple times before. I think this will be 
I think this will be my third or fourth time reading it, but it has still been a couple of years. Um, and just kind of an overview. This is a fantasy novel. Like it's not contemporary fantasy or historical fantasy or anything. It's like pure fantasy. Um, and it takes place obviously on an island. And I wonder how much I should say about the setup. But um, basically there are these people who are called the lost who have the ability to send their senses out from their body. Um, and the beginning of the book starts with something happening to all of the lost, except for our main character's name is Hathen. Her sister, Arilu, is the only one who that doesn't happen to. And so Hathen, she's like a very typical Frances Harding main character who I love, where she's like very ordinary. And she's just a regular person who like rises to the occasion because she cares about people. And I love her dearly. <laughs> um, yeah. And a lot of things happen. There's like mystery and revenge and... Um, I think from what I remember, the book also has a lot of commentary about the treatment of the indigenous population of the island because Hathen and Arilu and most of the people she's traveling with, um, they are natives of the island. And we also see there's like some some people who have settled on the island, like colonized it. Um, and I remember there being some really interesting commentary there. So hopefully I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, please do. We'd love to have you. Um, yes. So I remember it being one of my favorites of her books. So I'm really hoping that it lives up to that. Yeah. They'll be you hosting one. that one. Yes. Even though they're all here. So it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be leading the discussion for that one. Um, yeah. And date and time to be determined as usual. And I put all of Hannah's information in the description box. So please go and follow her. Um, yeah. Is there anything else we need to cover? I think that's everything from my end. All right. Thank you for thank you to Julia and Kelly for joining yes. us. Yes. And thank you guys. I know a few people are going to be watching it back after. So thank you if you are watching this um, not in real time. We really appreciate you joining in and hope that you've been enjoying the books. Right. So yeah, we will see you next time. Thank you.